if something's not working, you need to start cutting people out, replacing them with new coaches, um, new team team members and everything. Just how you deal with sports. If you're not going toward that championships, if you're stuck where you're currently at, maybe it's that job that's paying you under wage, no vacation hours. You need to cut that head coach, find a different coach, find a different team, find a different environment so you can get that different result that you want. Yo, what's going on, millionaires? You're listening to the Million Dollar Mind Podcast, episode 206 on securing the bag with high ticket sales. Now, I'm excited about this conversation because, man, we got my homie Mike B in the building. And for those who really be tapped into the community and the Million Dollar Mind platform, you are already familiar with Mike's face because we had him on an IG live or not an IG live, but a YouTube live. where He was just talking about like how to, you know, find your purpose, how to, you know, get those high income skills. Right, Mike? You remember that conversation? Yes, Yes, that, was a, that was a legendary one. So I'm ready for this this in person conversation because I know our you know listeners, our millionaires are going to get a lot of game and a lot of feedback on, especially as they transition it from this nine to five. This is the, the theme of the conversation, yes. right? We got yes, a lot yes, of nine yes. to fivers who's listening to these conversations and they're like, yo, Kai, you're giving us all these different e-com instructors. You're giving us all these different, you know, product and service based folks that's telling us we can step into that. And I'm starting to find, you know, something I'm interested in going full time into. Uh But the key is how do I transition from my nine to five to this entrepreneurship life full time? And that key is going to be sales. So, bro, I'm excited about having this conversation. And for those who are joining us for the first time and don't know Mike, Mike is a high ticket sales coach. Also the creator of a virtual high ticket sales agency and the author of three steps to making 15 K in 21 days. So tell us about that journey as, you know, being a newly written author, right? You got your yeah. ebook out and, and tell us a little bit about the ebook, what it's about and, you know, how it's going to walk people through that journey into high ticket sales. Yeah, absolutely, man. I appreciate that intro, by the way, too, bro. Yeah, solid, no doubt, bro. Solid. But the book basically just gives you the skill set you need to go from nine to five to actually making five, 10, 20K, 30K a month. What I see a lot happening, uh, Kai, is when you're at a nine to five job, Mm -hmm. you have discipline, you got structure, you have a boss, you have PTO, like you have a set system that allows you to thrive. Mm -hmm. But what I see people make the mistake in, and you probably know this better than anyone, that like a lot of businesses fail in the first three years. Right. But the reason because is because you lose that structure. You go out, you have all this time, all this freedom. But what I find in remote closing and having that skill set in sales is that you still have that structure in terms of like joining a sales team, mm-hmm. having, you know, set calls, doing things that are generating you income. So you do that for a year, which is what I did. And then after that, you have the skill set to sell, go out, make money. But this is more like that transitional phase from nine to five, becoming a closer, get the skill set, and then go out, close deals, make money then. So it's like the perfect middle ground mm. to get you to. That makes sense. That makes sense. And I never really thought about it like that because, one, you are right that when the, the the most, the number one reason why a lot of businesses fail is because that discipline, that structure, that yeah. foundation then gets kind of lost from that attitude of like, yo, I'm finally done with this job. Yes. Now I got my own schedule. And then with having your own schedule, we actually just talked about this a couple episodes back with uh, Sharif Gordon. It's like you got to still have that same boss schedule for yourself. Yes. Right. Like, OK, I got a certain time that I go eat lunch. It may not have to be 12 or one o'clock, but you can say like, hey, I'm not going to eat lunch until I close this many deals or I'm not going to eat lunch until I send this many offers or if I set this many appointments. Right. You got to create some type of schedule and flow for yourself to be able to achieve in that environment of I'm my own boss now. Mm -hmm. And if, you know, I don't tell me to do it. Who else is going to tell me to do it? 100%, man. So, and, and that makes a lot of sense. And even just thinking back to my own journey when I first transitioned here to Atlanta, the thing that opened me up to entrepreneurship was taking a step into a sales role. There you go. Right now, it wasn't high ticket sales. I was more on like the telecom sales and more like um, B2C, you mm-hmm. know, business to customer and consumer. But still, like just in that sales environment, you do learn a lot of skill sets that can yes. be transferable in to entrepreneurship. Yeah. So, Let's talk about that. Let's start off the conversation there. Like, why is sales so important? You used it as the transitional period mm-hmm. for going from nine to fiver to entrepreneur. Yes. Sales is important because how you, we, it's how we, we make money. 
to right. get a sample. So you make money. <laughs> and you'd be surprised because one of the first programs that I closed for, it's teaching business owners how to become online coaches. Mm-hmm. And you know what the number one issue that I saw a lot of entrepreneurs face? Charging what they're worth. Oh, so, many, so like undercharging. Undercharging and just being afraid to just say, my price is 5K. People had a weird mindset in the sense of who's going to pay for this, right? Like who can afford my services? So they would undercharge what they thought their clients had. And what we do, you know, we have 5K, 10K, 15K. The guy who I close for has a 55K program. Mm. So for most of the people that I spoke to, and this kind of goes to your point of learning how to sell, it's understanding that the price is only relevant when the value is absent, And for business owners, I think the most valuable thing to understand is the value of what you have. Mm. If you can make someone, let's say, 10K a month and they only pay 5K for that investment, it's a no brainer. Mm. Right. Mm -hmm. So when it comes back to selling, first, it's just a belief that what I have is worth 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 K. It can change someone's life. And to even take it one step further that I was uh, telling Sarah about earlier is the ability to ask questions. How many people do we know who are entrepreneurs who just like talk? Oh, right? man, just talk, 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 tell, 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 tell. Yeah. This is what I do. This is how I, yes. Just be rapping. You get this, you get that. You got coaching calls four times a week, yada, yada, yada. But in reality, no one cares about that. Mm. People only care about what matters to them. Right. Right. Can this help me spend more time with my family? Can this help me work less so I can do the things that I enjoy? And to answer your question, Q, that's all sales really is, is focusing on giving that person what they want. But the only way you would understand that is by asking questions. Mm -hmm. And that's all sales is from my perspective, is just asking good questions to understand or understand what that person wants. Hell yeah. And and most importantly, like you said, is is how you make money. Yeah. And to be in business, you ain't going to be in business very long if you're not making money. Because right. <laughs> it don't matter if you start in a home business, if you start a brick and mortar, all businesses have expenses. It yeah, costs money, right? So mm-hmm. if you're going to be able to eat that cost, you're going to have to know how to make some money. And it, it's much deeper than just... And I, I think asking the right questions is still the best starting point and the mm-hmm. best way to understand it is like, this is how I don't talk too much. Right. And you can never really talk too much if all the times you're talking, you're asking a question. You're not listening. Right. right? But I think it, it goes a little bit even deeper to more so figuring out how you can, I guess, take each client and over deliver on the value. Because Facts. then now you got that word of mouth going. Facts. And I think that's a, even a skill that we oftentimes lose track of is over delivering on the value. Mm-hmm. Because then we got a marketing engine that is word of mouth. And, and, and the talking points. Yeah. Uh, have you had any testimonies where, like, I guess give us some advice on how you can over deliver, like how you find that value first and then over deliver on those promises, over deliver on that yeah. value without feeling like you running yourself ragged or mm-hmm. you not being paid your value? Because that is a question that a lot of people think, like, when do I like how much do I charge? And then mm-hmm. let's say I do get the courage to charge my 5K, but I'm giving them 10K worth of value. Is that bad? Is that good? What, what's the mindset you apply to that? Well, all right. Can I give out like the play? Yeah. yeah. Like, give the us the play. play give fast. us the play. Bro. Right, I'm play real quick. Let me get, let me get spicy on. them. All right. So when it comes to over delivering and first off, being in sales as a remote closer, I love the fact that I just deal with the sales side. Uh, fulfillment, it's a separate side. But to answer your question, Q, the way you can over deliver in sales, like on a sales call specifically, is what I like to call a quick win. We live in a generation now where we're in like instant gratification. Mm. Right? No one's trying to make money in 30 days, 90 days. They try to make money now, like today. Mm -hmm. And what I find is so successful that I work with my closers with is what can we do to get this client a win in the next 30 minutes to an hour Mm. fast, right? Mm -hmm. For example, if you're on a sales call and let's say it involves funding, financing, Q, how long does it take to get approved for a credit card? Pretty fast. Five minutes, maybe? Yeah. You think if someone got approved for a 10K credit card, they'd be like, whoa, like they'd be locked in, like, damn, that happened pretty quickly. Right. And you you talking to them about how to take their business to the next level. So they probably got an idea of what to even do with those funds. Exactly. I mean, if it involves, you know, capital get started, 
you helping someone get it 5, 10K within five minutes is a quick win. And that's something you could say on a call that I love to do for like sense of urgency. Mm. You know, folks be like, can, can, I, uh, can I think about it? Can I uh, call you back at this number tomorrow? <laughs> right. I always say, yeah, you can do whatever you like, but in the next 20, 30 minutes, all this could be happening. So the 30 minutes, the hour, the two hours that you're waiting right now, we could have had 10, 20, 30K of funding just like that. And even for like real estate, for example, how long does it take to go on like realtor.com, find a realtor to literally go out and help you start finding deals for a property? Mm. Five, 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. So, but to answer your question with over delivering, it's just giving that person a win now, a win today. No one's trying to wait to make money. So how can I get that person a W like ASAP? And I feel from a sales role, that's the biggest, one of the biggest things they could do. Mm. And then they feel your energy. They hyped up like, oh, I can make money to now. 5K. Wait, it's wait. Over. So as a high ticket closer um, before and now or, you know, and or whichever one, are you like literally on the phone helping them get funding? All right. Millionaires, entrepreneurs, moguls, philanthropists, managers even. Right. I want to encourage you to purchase my book, Lead from the Front, because it is essential if you want to learn how to be an effective leader, not just for others, but for yourself as well. Learning the tools or the importances, I should say, of accountability, discipline. We have so many resources and tools that are in the book to help you give better feedback, give more genuine feedback, you know, hold yourself to a higher standard and hold others to a higher standard without making them feel like you're the person that tells a lot but doesn't lead by example. And that's what the whole purpose of the book is to lead from the front. So if you haven't already, go check out my book, Lead from the Front. You can find it on my website at www.kaispeaks.com. It'll be right there at the top. Is that like the, what does that look like, that, that, uh, that quick win? Got you. So it depends on the program. Okay. I give an example because we have so many different offers. Uh, let's say for like real estate, you need funding for a property, do um what's it called liquidate a credit card for a down payment boom for example let's say for coaching helping like neil one of my other clients they have programs where you could create a digital product ebook course whatever like that you can get someone a win within 24 hours let's say for that when it comes to maybe buying an ebook off plnr mm -hmm. ebooks already ready to go you do marketing on a theme page to drive traffic to that ebook that's something that could be done within 24 hours so depending on what the offer is, there's likely something in that course that can get someone a win that fast. And if the course is built correctly from whoever the online coach is, mm -hmm. they should have wins or steps to get you that win pretty mm -hmm. quickly. Okay, so it's more so on the on product. The, yeah, the product, so, thing, correct. So then that goes into product knowledge, like being a sales rep, how important is product knowledge? It, whether it's a product or service you sell them for somebody else, or just you know something that you're developing and, and need to learn how to sell yes. it. How important is that product knowledge and how deep does it get as yes. far as understanding your product and service? You need to get that deep though, Q, to be real with you, right. man. Like when I train closers, I only have them go through the first maybe five, 10 modules. Cause most people who get a course, when do they stop? First off, most folks don't even open the course, <laughs> they keep it a hundred. So if you know at least the first five, 10 modules, you're already 90% ahead of them. So you're already an expert coming into the call. And that's what I tell folks. You don't need to be an expert per se in it. Just know more than the client does. Mm. And then you'll already be 10 steps ahead of the game. So Okay, so it's not like the, the quick win. It's not a literal quick win, but it's like a, a, a figurative. Like you want them to see the quick win more so. No, nah, it can happen. Ah, Realistically. Okay. Damn. Yeah, so, realistically. Like for example, uh, for YouTube, right? Okay. Um, I, run a, I help run a YouTube automation. And with YouTube, how long does it take to literally sign up for a YouTube account? Two seconds. Exactly. Yeah, Gmail account. <laughs> Done. Easy. Even going one step further, like content. So many folks struggle with posting content online. Cue your content creator. If that's the offer around content creation, how long does it take to use your phone, do a video? Here are three things I wish I knew before I got started in X. That's yeah. a win right there. Mm -hmm. So helping someone just do that like right then at that moment Sometimes even on the call is uh, what I find is super powerful to get them like a quick win. And once they feel that win, they're more inclined to make that investment because they're already seeing 
momentum. Got it. So it's more so like free game, like giving them some free game, some things that they didn't know, but can clearly be transformative in how they move in and how they operate and before the call. Correct. Correct. You have to be like now, like ASAP. Right. right? Like now. Just talking is a talk. (laughs) So you'll you'll even. So let's say, for example, because I literally just got off uh, off a call like this. Right. I got, you know, some people that are looking to launch a podcast and they didn't know about a specific way that you can monetize that podcast. And it's, let's say, subscription. Okay. So we like give them a model like on how they can literally create a subscription now. That's a, that was that's what you would consider that that quick win. Can it can it be done within a, uh, a day? It, it literally can be done within a day. That's a winner right there. And like we walk them through it, like hey, if you start doing this type of content, you do this, you set up this account, boom, you can literally start to get it today. Exactly. That's quick an example win. of that quick win. Yes, yes, yes. Got it. So it's not literally like specific. It doesn't have to be as specific as getting funding. That was just an example. Correct. I mean, you could do a credit card play on the phone, right? Or, you know, after the make the purchase. But yes, whatever can be done within an hour or two hours that they could not do before, but you on the phone, pushing them, motivating them, whatever it may be, causes them to do that thing that prior they weren't doing. Mm, That's big. Man, is this something that you honestly feel like anybody with enough focus and 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 applied, applied focus, right, that they can get into and be successful when it comes to like sales? Is this like Something that is like, oh, you got to be talented. You got to have that natural talent. You got to be super charismatic. Is it really that or can even, you know, the more timid Mm -hmm. personalities, you know, people Mm. who never saw themselves in the sales environment, could they possibly thrive in an environment like that? Key, that's a great question. Do you think anyone can ask a question? I think any. I think I think everyone already asks questions. <laughs> Absolutely, so, and specifically, they ask questions to get what they want. Even better, yes. Right. So to answer that, one thousand percent, anyone could be a closer. Anyone could be great at sales if you just ask questions. Mm-hmm. That's all it is. The other day, I went to Best Buy to buy a TV, and I don't buy TVs. I've had a TV in my house for the last four years, probably. But you know making a little bit of money, want to have a nice apartment. Mm-hmm. So I go in there looking for help. Kid comes up, probably 16, 17 years old, whatever. And I ask him, like, hey, like, what's the best? Like, what do you think makes the most sense? His response, I don't know. <laughs> I, I was, was like, I, figured, <laughs> I was like, like, I don't want to be here. because Right. You know, he's, he's young, probably making a little bit of money. So I was like, OK, between the 43 inch and this 55 inch. I really, I really didn't know what's the best. What do you think makes the most sense? He was like, 55 inch. I was like, why? Uh, Samsung is really good. Okay. Well, why is Samsung good? He was like, it just is. Like, okay. And we just went down a rabbit hole of going nowhere, basically. I bought the TV, but I came, I got it based off what I just assumed made sense. But him as a sales rep, it could have been so easier, and I don't know if he got commissioned for it or not, to really sell me on the highest package. And I kept thinking, what could he ask me to close me on getting a freaking 80 inch TV? Well, what are you looking to use? Like, what are you primarily looking to watch on the TV? Exactly. You, you exactly. have a family come over to watch it with you. you Where's this going to be placed? Or the theater? Yeah, 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 definitely. A mm-hmm. whole lot of questions I could think off top. And anyone could do that to answer a question. Like, just be interested. So this man just came here for a TV. Is it going in the bedroom? Is it going in the living room? Is it going in the basement? If it's going in the bedroom, he's not going to get a freaking 70 inch. That doesn't make sense. Is he playing video games? Is he watching movies on it? Oh, he's watching movies. Okay. What kind of movies? High def action films, Marvel. Oh, he's going to want to watch something like intensive. Is it with his family or is it just him? You know, stuff like that. So I think to answer your question, yes, anyone can be great at sales if they just actually are curious Mm -hmm. about people. And that's an interesting question because I I highly doubt and I I don't know, but just something in me highly doubts that 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 kid was probably going to get a commission on the TV that he sells (laughs) at Best Buy. Right. Uh, He probably is just there hourly. He got a shift and he's just ready to get off. But I mean, that is a good point and a good question to ask, like, is commission a structure that motivates people for performance more so or equal to a salary base only type of gig? Oh, absolutely. Commission will motivate people because you are in control of what you make. The only thing stop you from making 10, 20, 30 K is you. Now, is it meant for everybody? 
Definitely not. But if you have that natural drive, that ambition, and maybe starting the business is not just what you're getting ready to do, then commission only sales makes sense. Where else could you make $1,000 an hour? High ticket sales, 10K, 10K sale, 10% commission, 1,000 bucks made in 30 minutes. Mm-hmm. Um, I have a closer named Amika who made a 35K sale last week. She was working as a nurse during COVID for like two, three years. She made 3,500 bucks in one hour. Mm. That can't happen anywhere else. Yeah, no, You can't yeah, start a well. business. Like think about it, even for a business, you gotta have expenses for that. You gotta have, I don't know, this podcast, mics, marketing, whatever. But she made $3,500 from talking on the phone. And she simply just swapped her time for money. So to answer your question, Q, yes, commission-only sales makes sense if you have that natural drive and ambition to like go and do more, but you're not yet at that point to start a business. Mm-hmm. Does that ambition and drive have to be natural? Like, is there a way that you can cultivate that that drive and ambition? Because, like, let's just say for the people who let's let's just I'm playing devil's advocate. I've been in a corporate environment, you know, behind the desk for five, 10 years of my life already. So I'm kind of used to the showing up, you know, being in my space, you know, sipping my coffee, getting my work done when I, you know, how the day goes. But I'm not used to like this high energy, high ambitious, motivating type of environment. Is this something that I'm looking at possibly getting into? Can I cultivate or can I manufacture that type of ambition and drive? Or does it have to be something that comes naturally? Yeah. Q, let me say this, man. Honestly, you're right. Everyone not, will not have ambition, for sure. But there's two things that motivate people, pain and pleasure. For me personally, I never had huge ambition. Like I came from Maryland, family taught me education, get good grades, go to high school, get good grades, go to college good, good grades, get a good job. Mm -hmm. So I never had that natural, like, all right, let's go get it. Right. But for me personally, I got a good job at a front desk in uh, Las Vegas as a front desk manager. And on October 1st, 2018, there was the biggest shooting in mass history that happened at my hotel, Mm. Mandalay Bay. 100 people died at that. And I was a front desk manager on duty. Mm. Seeing people literally sprint to the front desk saying there's a shooter in the building. And me as a front desk manager, taking my agents out, it was a crazy experience. The following day, the hotel went on as if nothing happened. We're finding guests, um, getting their bags out the room, making sure everyone's straight. And at that point, I thought to myself, if I, God forbid, was a part of this and I lost my life, Have I done everything to feel fulfilled? Would I have any regrets? And I thought to myself, absolutely I would. Mm. And for me, that was the pain that gave me the motivation to say like, this nine to five thing's not for me. Let me look for other options. So to answer your question, Q, I think anyone can do it. It's just gonna require a moment like that to happen to you where it's like enough is enough. I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. Mm. Or on the flip side, the pleasure, I want to get there, something along those lines. So it's up to that person to to decide what that turning point will be. Yeah. And you got to be really intentional on that, like what you want to get out of that, that on the other end of that turning point. Yeah. And man, I I never knew that. uh, uh, I never knew that situation. And I'm sorry that you had to experience something like that. How did that, like, how did that make you feel like, just thinking, just having the thoughts, whether it was true or not, but just having the thoughts that, wow, they operating as if nothing happened. Yes. The day a day later, like, how did that make you feel? What did that, like, not even to think about the 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 scary situation of being there in that moment while it was happening, yeah. but afterwards, like, at now at this point, you know, you're safe, and things have kind of calmed down. After that, how were you? How were you feeling in that moment? Like being in that environment in that at that place. <sighs> 
as in when it, how did I feel? Like after the fact, like after things have calmed down, okay, and okay. you were you had those thoughts like they don't even care, like things are kind of back to normal. Yeah, man. I I thought I thought to myself that if I don't make a change, first off, I'm gonna be here for another five, ten years. Mm-hmm. Something doesn't happen. But then I thought like this is someone's business. Someone's gonna be making money no matter what here. I might as well just take the jump and bet on myself at this point. And that's all I just kept thinking. I'm like, dang, business is going to go on no matter what here. Whether it's a mass tragedy that happened like that, anything, things don't stop. The, my thing was, where do I play a part in this, right? Like in my journey, where does this make sense? Mm-hmm. And that's why I just felt I have to have my own story, you mm-hmm. know, do my own thing. And if it fails, cool. Go back to a job, figure it out, whatever though. But yeah, man, at that time I just thought, damn. They're ruthless out here. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So they don't care. So after, so after, so you leave this job and then you go right into doing something for yourself, or you go right into high ticket sales for someone else. Which came first? I started a business, and I failed miserably at that. So let's tell you. Let's talk about it because right <laughs> right I'm sure that this is the relatability is part, right? Because a lot of people, you know, leave their job and they go full into this business. And, you know, it may start off really optimistic mm-hmm. and it just doesn't perform the way they thought. And now you have people who are literally right now watching this, probably like in the position where they have to have that humility yes. to either go back to that same job that they quit mm-hmm. or move back home because they left an area like they left home to, you know, go pursue something mm-hmm. or just go back and, you know, have a job after a whole bunch of people know them for being the entrepreneur. Right. Yes. So like you speak what, me right now. Yeah. Like what <laughs> what, is, what does that look like? You know, that that failure. Talk about it and then oh, talk about, yeah. you know, the decisions and the mindset leading up to making that jump back into, you know, working for someone else. Man, keep up putting me in a dark place right now. <laughs> um, yeah, man, it was rough. So first, I started reselling. We've all heard of Amazon FBA. Mm-hmm. Sounds good on paper, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go on Amazon, go to Target, you buy something, you flip it online, you make money. Sounds good. So that was my first type of thing I tried. Mm-hmm. And there's a guy named Gary Vee. He had this thing called the 2017 Flip Challenge. And uh, I was going to garage sales, thrift stores, buying shoes, video games, flipping online. Little, little, little money stuff. Made enough money to quit my job during Q4, going somewhat decent. And then it got to a point to scale and reselling, you got to like start buying in bulk eventually. Yeah. Like buying from like wholesalers, which requires money. <laughs> <laughs> money. Real money. <laughs> Not just like little 10, 20 other items. So I'm like, all right, you got some decent credit, got some credit cards, you know, got four or five. All right. Keep spending credit cards, get money, makes sense. Didn't go how I thought it would go. I uh, got into debt, thirty k of credit card debt from buying from wholesalers, and no one talks about this, but this is a real thing with businesses. You need money to make money mm-hmm. for the most part. And long story short, went into debt, and I had no choice but to get my job back at the hotel. Different hotel, same position, front desk manager, and it sucked. Because I was on Instagram flexing, you know, entrepreneur, living life to my fullest and had to take a huge reality check going back to a job. Mm. Suit on at the front desk, like, how did this happen? Blessed to have met my brother Nehemiah Davis, who's a mentor and a coach to me. And when he said he was looking for closers, okay, I've been in sales before. It's commission only, cool. Remote, cool. Flex, flexible hours, cool. Check all my boxes. So, all right, cool. I'll give it a shot. Started closing for him, taking maybe five, six calls a day as I was at my full-time job. And started making money. You know, had my little roughs up and downs. But first month made 2K, second month made 4K, third month made 5K. Enough for me to feel like I got a good feel at this, I can leave. Quit my job the second time. Oh, so you were doing it part time? Yeah. I was so you was doing it like, okay, so during the day you're working at the hotel, and then when you get home, you okay. logging in and you on them phones for, for Neo. Taking calls. Got gotcha. you. All day. All day. And uh, yeah, 5K. And then uh, I got to the point to where sink or swim, as you say, burn all the boats. Again. <laughs> yeah. Again, right. Again. That's bold, bro, because especially after sinking and mm-hmm. put, put almost drowning the first time, right? Doing it again and burning it, burning it. Like, what do you think was that 
Like, was there a why? What What was it for you to go through the same thing and expecting the different results? Even you know, I'm sure you're doing a little bit of things differently, like different actions and stuff. But still, that's still scary. I think the biggest thing, Q, was I wasn't doing it by myself this time. Mm. The first time around, solo entrepreneur, solo gotcha. printer, as you say, no help, no support, just me hustling. This time around, I have my brother Neo, who's a millionaire. There was other closers. We have a team. We have structure. We have a community almost. So this time around, this was more of I have people to push me now. And people always want to push starting a business, which I'm all for, for sure. But like, do you know that like the first 10 employees of Facebook? Mark? That's it. <laughs> no one knows the other nine. Yeah. But the other nine are all multimillionaires. Right. They're all people who help Mark build Facebook. Mm. Same thing for Elon Musk. Shares in Tesla are all millionaires and billionaires now. Right. So to answer your question, I had a coach or a product to sell that was already solid, made money already. And I think the thing that can help people cue or kind of maybe struggling or trying to figure out what is if you map pair yourself with someone already on the come up, someone who's already making money in a lot of situations is way better of a chance of success than starting your own business. Mm. Just in probability wise, mm -hmm. because you just being around someone making millions of dollars, like how they say, you are who you surround yourself with. The chances increase significantly than you just doing it by yourself. Right. But to answer the question, that's the biggest thing that helped me. Neil calling me. He hitting me up. Hey, here's how you handle this objection. I went to Brazil with Neo. Gave me my first passport going out there. We traveled to two countries together. Meeting him. He got me out here to Atlanta from Vegas then. So seeing someone just really set the tone is what changed this around for me and how I made 25, 30, even 35K in a month from this compared to reselling would never happen. Guarantee that <laughs> my own business. If so, it costs a lot of money. Yeah. But gotta, yeah, got to put up a lot of money to see those same numbers. Crazy. I, I dig it. I dig it. Because like you said, you got to be able to sell it. You got to have the inventory and to have the inventory, you got to front the front the cost. Yeah. Easy. That makes sense. So like what was going back from solopreneur to this front desk job at yeah. the hotel, like, and you and you yeah, were saying like you was flexing at first, right? Yeah, so exactly. like, did you go on like a social media hiatus at the time? Were you still maybe like trying to flex, but also like hide the fact that I'm still <laughs> at the hotel, like I'm back at the hotel? Like, That's a good question. Talk about because like these are real situations that people go through right now. So like, what was it like? What do, what do that? Did you just like, hey, I'm I'm in this moment. I'm back at this job that I don't really want to be at. Do you at that point get off social media, or do you still kind of go with? portraying the the image that you've created that you don't want to kind of renege on? Yeah, that's a really good question, Q, actually. Um, okay, so in all transparency, I, I was still posting, I was posting at the time, like, resell, about, resell content, mm. flipping content, and I was still kind of doing it. So I was still posting, but not definitely as frequent. But I would say the biggest thing that was tough for me, man, was a change of identity. Because for a long time, people knew me as a reseller. Mm. Going online, flips off on Amazon. So it took me a while to get the identity of a closer. Got you. For, I like that you said that, too. And not to cut you off, just yeah, the identity for, of a closer. Yeah. And we talking proud about, about this. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> proud and, and we talking about, like, manufacturing motivation, manufacturing mm -hmm. ambition. Like, is it possible for someone mm -hmm. in this type of environment to then switch into another environment and just you saying that alone, that sparks it. Like it's yeah. probably, it probably requires a switch of identity. Big time, man. How do you go about that change of identity? You like, and this could go for all types of people. Like whether you're trying to, you know, switch on the identity of a millionaire, you want to switch on the identity of a entrepreneur, or a boss, like whatever it is that you want to do. I think for the most part, it requires you got to actually believe that shit. You got to believe it. But even for kids nowadays. People see rappers. There's a reason why rappers and athletes are like so cool because it's like mainstream popular. Um, entrepreneurship is now getting popular, and it kind of was when I was in this. But for some reason, when I was starting, like closing deals wasn't sexy. Like it wasn't like for a, other people, right? Yeah, it wasn't like, it like was if like, you close the deal yourself, like hey, I just got this deal. That, that's pretty cool. Like you could flex. Yeah, but closing for other people, I could see how you see like just this. like the closer, like yeah. a closer. It just wasn't like a thing, right? You okay. know. 
I think people knew about it, but it wasn't as big as it is now. So the answer question, like back then, that was my hardest thing. You know, we're all human and we all want to fit in, make friends, yada, 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 obviously. But like, I didn't know anyone. It sounds crazy who like made it look cool though. Even now, it's really not that many people out there where you're like, all right, like lifestyle, fun, looks like me. Recently, they, it was there. E-commerce, it's everywhere. Drop shipping, it's everywhere. But that was the thing that I struggle with. It's just like, damn, what will people think about this? Mm -hmm. What will they think about me taking phone calls? Mm -hmm. You know, how do you even document this? Right? Mm -hmm. What do I just record myself taking phone calls? But to help people in the mainstream narrative, how can I say? Honestly, I would say like to truly help someone who's probably is struggling with the identity, it really is just getting around more folks who are doing it. Mm. Cause I didn't feel as weird about it once I met other closers and we had our own little community of people who were like, all right, yeah. we're doing this. And it's funny you say that because you're right. You don't really notice, like even still on social media, you don't really notice nobody makes that their their brand. Like yeah. nobody's branded as closers on social media. They're branded as e e-com. They're branded as real estate. They branded as whatever, whatever fad word is out right now. Mm -hmm. But when you really dive into and you have these conversations, like how do you get started? Like the millionaires who really tune in can attest to this. Like I would say maybe like 80 percent of the people we have on the show have somewhat of an experience in sales like their path took them to some type of sales job sales position mm -hmm. high ticket sales low ticket sales whatever mm -hmm. sales before they got to where they are that qualified them to get on the show mm -hmm. so with that saying I, I could see how for most people they wouldn't think it's a thing and it may not be sexy and that's just because there aren't people who really even want to brand themselves as it yeah. it's kind of like i rather be, this be my secret Right, right. It's right, like right. this is my secret to <laughs> right. success, which is weird because right. you make money off it. So yeah, it's like, so it's like be a secret. They <laughs> pop out as this ecom guru, but then they don't tell you like before. I before calls. I was doing this, yeah, I stacked my money up. I had like fifteen, thirty thousand dollars saved from doing high ticket sales that I could then put ten k yes into this ecom business. Right, yeah, man. So good point. For the people who are watching this, what would be the best way to expose yourself? to these high ticket closers when they're not in plain sight? Like, where do you go to find a community of high ticket closers? Oh, as an online coach or a business owner? At, like, or just as an as a nine to five or that is look, looking at this and like, okay, I know I wanna be an entrepreneur, but I don't have a business yet. I don't know how to get started in this. Let me slide, let me slide in this. Um, said phone's on silent and my it's phone I don't follow it's the laptop but no but but they said but they said pretty much like I want to transition into sales to bridge the gap from nine to fiver to entrepreneur where can they find that community do they find like agencies uh discord like where is this place full of these community of closers that can kind of hold your hand into the life of closing yeah and point you in the, into the promised land of sales yeah man it's um it's tough. It's tough to be honest with you, kid. Mm -hmm. But of course, there's tons of groups out there. You can go to masterminds, you go to conferences. We're in Atlanta here. So it's not hard to find entrepreneurs who are making money. That's easy. But to find people you actually have a true connection with, like, for example, in, in our group here um, or my group with the lead closers, there's about 18 closers in there. And every time they post a win, they are cheering each other on. It's like when you're playing basketball. You make, you, you make a shot, whole bench go crazy. Mm. And when I first started the group, I didn't know what the value would be like long-term. Cause when I started, I had no one to really go to besides Neo and a few guys. But in the group, you see people who are cheering each other on, giving tips, value. Here's how I overcame this objection. And you're finding a true community. Now I always say your transactions lead to your transformations. And every single investment I've ever made into myself has turned me into a better person, just step by step. Mm -hmm. So I would say if someone's truly serious about getting around closers or getting around anyone who you want to be in, um, making the investment to yourself, they're out there for sure. And like even in my group, you know, you can find them, full community of people, but they're likely an investment has to be made that can get you that return of what you want.
I mean, full disclosure, I mean, pretty much, Mike, we're saying we could really just come to you. You should tap it with me. Yeah, we could just tap, just tap it with, in with me. Yeah, got it. You know nope. it could sound politically Check. correct, but. Yeah, we could just <laughs> tap it with all these Mike. things, but just, you know, yeah. call me. So you got like a so you got like a Discord where it's like people can kind of tap in with you. Telegram, yeah. See the win. Oh, Telegram. Yeah. So they could see the wins. They could be in the environment. And um, they could tap in with your content because you're putting out great content, too. Speaking of the content that you put out, you had put out a post recently that was talk, you know, made the comparison of sales and basketball. Yes. So we got a lot of basketball fans out here oh, who might be still watching this and still can't understand why they would want to get into high ticket sales or why it's important and how it can be this nice bridge, uh, this this uh, this gap bridger. Right. What is the comparison? Like, why is sales like basketball? Sales is like basketball for a number of reasons. I think the con- the comparison I made in the video was involving winning a championship mm. in the sense of you're helping that client get to their goal. And you as a closer, you're really not a closer. Closer is the more of the term for like B2B, like us to talk about that. Mm-hmm. But for the client, you're a coach or you're an advisor. They don't see you as a, yeah. as a, yeah, you don't see as a closer. But what I was trying to say in the video was your job is to create a path to help that person win their championship. Whatever the goal is in their mind, having a family, making money, traveling, buying a big house, that's your, that's their win. How can I create a roadmap to help that person win their championship? And that's why I saw the relationship between basketball and sales, because in basketball, you're all going toward a goal. You have a coach helping you reach that goal. You're the coach to help the client reach that goal. Mm. So you're looking at the the desires, the 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 um, practices. You're looking at the habits, yeah. right? Yeah, man. Looking at these players' diets. You know, you're, yeah, you're seeing what they're consuming, not just what they eating, but what they're consuming. Like, what type of content are you consuming? Yeah. What books are you reading? Where you want to get to? How you plan on getting there? Asking these questions and formulating a plan. Yes. To 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 win that championship. Got you, man. My Love brother, he always says, "What what entertains you trains you," mm. and what you consume becomes who you are at the end of the day. People expect to make all this money watching Shade Room all day. <laughs> or you expect to, uh, you know, a lot of folks I know, they know LeBron stats more than they know their own stats. Mm. Oh, we got game six tonight. Oh, LeBron's <laughs> about to come in and drop 40, 40, 40, 40 on them. But you can't tell me how much money you made today. Mm. And uh, when I heard that, it just made so much sense to me. And even to go one step further with a basketball analogy, uh, you've seen the Golden State Warriors. Mm-hmm. Savages right now. It wasn't always like that, though. They had to go through a lot of players, a lot of head coaches. They used to be sorry. Extremely sorry. <laughs> even, with, even with Steph. Even with Steph. For like a little bit. They had Monte Ellis for the real throwback yeah, there. Yeah. Um, but even like uh, I've heard a couple of my guys say that even in business, you have to kind of cut people out and bring new folks into your life. I see sales and entrepreneurship is no different. If something's not working, you need to start cutting people out, replacing them with new coaches, um, new team team members and everything. Just how you deal with sports, if you're not going toward that championship, so if you're stuck where you're currently at, maybe it is that job that's paying you under wage, no vacation hours. You need to cut that head coach, find a different coach, find a different team, find a different environment so you can get that different result that you want. Yeah. And I like how you said what it, what entertains you trains you. Yeah. And you're right. There's a lot of people right now mainly going to sources like The Shade Room, Netflix, mm-hmm. you know, Hulu, you know, your streaming services that – are looking at mm-hmm. as the main source of entertainment. Yes. Um, and then even just thinking about reading a book 20 minutes <laughs> a day, there's nothing sexy or entertaining oh, with man. that, right? Can you fall so, asleep on that. Again, how do you then switch the identity to learn how to entertain yourself with these things? And outside of mm-hmm. going to Mike for the community, mm-hmm. right? What are some like books or some some mm-hmm. some content that can be digested? Mm-hmm to help you make that transition of identity to be able to entertain yourself with sales content, sales, you know, education, and, and just content that's just going to make you a better closer. Man, there's, there's a lot of content out there. Shoot, I think even watching this content right here for, for your for your audience. Yeah, to start out, right? That, Watch this to the end. <laughs> plug, right? Uh, that's great, just to be watching this. But there's a lot of people out there, Alex Ramosi, GOAT, and the industry. Million dollar offers, right? Oh, man, yeah. If you haven't copped that book, get that. Million Dollar Offers by Alex Ramosi. That joint changed my life in a huge way. 
But then to go one step further in the sense of brainwashing yourself. Um, I was with Sarah coming over here and we're listening to Neo's mixtape. I don't know if you've you heard of it, but he, he, he got that. Uh, it's kind of like a motivation. Yeah, mixtape, right? yeah, it's fire. Yeah, that's where I got the line from. Entertains you, trains you. Mm, okay, <laughs> but listening to that, almost like brainwashing yourself to the point to where your mind wants to turn it off. Like, oh man, I want to listen to Future right now, or I want to listen to that, that new little baby, and it starts creeping there. Like, but when those moments creep, it's telling you to like keep listening though, keep listening. Cause you almost want to. It's like you're not brainwashed enough. Yeah, <laughs> you're like trying to abandon your own self. Like your old self is saying, "All right, man, I'm done with this. All right, let's go on YouTube and relax for a second. Mm-hmm. But what I notice is the longer I play it, the less that voice in the back of my head starts telling me, "All right, do this, do this, do that," and it starts slowly quieting itself to the point to where it's like normal. I can listen to that for an hour, two hours, three hours while I'm working and just feels normal. Yeah, that's true. And it's like people typically want to hold, it's like something within us that we want to hold on to our old self. Yes. Because I feel like part of the other brainwashing with being being tapped into this matrix we call social media and the internet, right? You got sayings like, oh, I would never change or I'm going to always be me. You know, and we we look at these as negative things when we say that we're going through changes or, you know, and it's so crazy because people will say like, new year, new me. But they really won't be a new a new them, <laughs> and they'll still have the same old habits from being that old person. So, how do you, how do you, I guess, dispel that myth and look into becoming the best version of yourself, even if that means changing yourself? And what does changing yourself look like from a good perspective? Like, what are good ways to change yourself? And you know, because you got the bad ways, you got ways that people are scared to change and you have ways that people need to change. There's a, there's a book called Atomic Habits. Oh, that, uh, yeah, a great book. You're that book, Johnny yeah. Fire. Uh, Atomic Habits talks about you are what your habits are. For example, with dieting, uh, a lot of people struggle with eating healthy, but it's not eating healthy that's hard. It's the habits you're doing to eat healthy. For example, when you feel stress, a lot of people, when they feel stress, they eat, they snack, unhealthy habits. I would say the key to kind of becoming the best version of you is tracking when that unhealthy thing happens. Maybe you want to watch like TV or whatever it may be, or do something that's not productive toward your goal. What triggers in my mind for that to happen? Mm, like what happened to make me even want to turn on the TV. Exactly. And, oh, gotcha. like, like, like what's the trigger there? Right. And you know, from entrepreneurship that a lot of people have limiting beliefs yeah. and the sense of why even do this in the first place, go to the gym. What's the point of even going to the gym? I'm not going to lose weight. What's the point? It's pointless. It's too far, too much money, yada, yada, yada. So they talk themselves out of it before they even get the chance to do it. So a lot of times, and they always say, build the mindset, before you build a skill set. Mm. And a lot of times with those habits, it's the mindset that's kind of blocking people though. So I would think for anyone getting started in a new habit, that's all it comes down to. Training your mind to think when those moments do happen, correct it and replace it with better habits. I'll say for me, for example, I'm not, I have like a dirty room pretty often and it's hard for me to keep it clean and my kitchen clean as well a lot of times. But I notice for me personally, it always happens when I'm rushing in the mornings. Mm. I wake up late, try to get to the gym, throwing stuff on left and right. I come back home, it's always on the floor, and I'm just like <sighs> tired, and it happens. So the correction, the habit is waking up earlier, having time, moving a little slow, slowing things down, slowing things down, make my bed, relaxing for a second, and then leaving. And that's what I've been doing for the last month. But I noticed the habit is when I wake up late, that's when the downturn starts happening. Yeah, that makes sense. And especially like um, just reading that book, Atomic Habits, I know one common habit that people seem to never notice is like if you get accustomed to um, eating like while watching TV on your couch. Right. So now anytime Mm -hmm. You sit down on the couch, it could eat. trigger you to want to eat. That's a good point. Or the opposite, like you go into the kitchen mm-hmm. to make you something quick to eat, you're going to be triggered to go sit on the couch and watch TV. That's a fact. 
So just from reading that book, it, it's so crazy how these habits can then stack onto other habits. And then you find yourself in this spiral of bad habits. Mm-hmm. Um, so when it comes to that brainwashing, what would you say? Like, what are you from your personal experience? What are your like top three ways or best way that you can advise to creating a, a good habit? Easiest way to break habits and create good habits is to surround yourself with people who have good habits. Mm. For example, when it comes to the gym, um, like we talk about, mm-hmm. uh, recently I joined a gym with like guys rich and fit, or boy Temi Tosin. Before, I hated working out. Mm. It was not my thing. Yeah, you in it, bro? You in there now <laughs> every day? <laughs> I'm every single day. I don't I don't miss a day now. But it wasn't always like that. And getting around those type of people who are high energy, they love going to the gym. That inspired me to be more consistent in the gym. So for people who are struggling, it really is finding that group of people who already have what you want. And for that investment, compared to what I got, it was pennies. Literally nothing could top what I paid for that, those monthly training sessions to get what I got back in return. Mm. Healthier body, everything, stronger muscles, nothing. So it does come down to investing into yourself. Mm. And like how we said, transactions really do cause transformations. I swear believe in that wholeheartedly yeah. that whatever issue you're having in your life, you need to make an investment to switch that and get around people who are already at that end destination. Man, that's a bar right there. I, I think a lot of people overlook that transaction part and True, knowing bro. that with a transformation, there is some sort of transaction that's tied to it. Yeah. And it may not always be monetary. It, yeah. it may be a, an event, a, a, an immense investment of time. But for the most part, it is some type of monetary or time investment. Those are like the only two ways that you time money invest time or money all day, man, all day. You know, have a lot of money, you have a lot of time. No, Speaking of time and money, it was are these high ticket sales? Are these are these mostly like commission only uh, opportunities? Absolutely, got it. Yeah, yeah. So with that said, would it be advised for someone to make a a immediate jump? into high ticket sales from like their their job like hey i hate this job because and this is only for the people who like literally say they hate the job because if i'm a big proponent if i hear you complaining about your job but so many times i'm going to tell you to leave that junk <laughs> and go find just go find something else it could be another job it could be another but find something else because like like too short to be complaining exactly. about something that you have all the control to change right would you advise someone to leave a you know salary position to go into a commission only position and then let's even take it a step deeper. Um, the difference between, you know, folks who might be out here single versus people who uh, have others that rely on them. What what are some of the challenges that you can see there in that type of transition? That's a good question, Q. Um, I would say yes. I'll, I'll tell this, for example. So I have one closer named Lana and Lana is 23 from Cali and she was a babysitter. For like I hope two years, mm. we hopped on for for an interview, and you know she joined the team. And her first day, she closed a sale for three thousand mm. dollars, made three hundred bucks on literally her first day. First day, first day, three hundred bucks, and the babysitting job was like four days of work, I think, something like that. And she had to try travel two hours away to do all that crap. So she came off the rip and crushed it. Um, I told you about Amika, my other boy Corey. He was a truck driver for like six years. In his first two weeks, he had a 10K sale for a thousand at home with his family. He had had a baby recently and he didn't have any experience or background in this. So to answer your question, if you have a good offer, that's the key, a good offer. And that's why I love what I do in the business is helping closers find good offers. Because to be real, like you were in sales, we can only go so far with, with a bad product. Yeah, <laughs> you know, we can't do much without a good product. And maybe not even the, the product being bad, but just the presentation of the product can sometimes be bad. Like even you do a good job presenting it, but mm-hmm. everything else on the back end is, is, is nothing that really shows any true value to the people when they look at it. Nothing. You know, it's just, it's just you're selling garbage. Mm-hmm. And that's why I love the community that we're in and who I'm able to pair different clues with are people with viable offers. My one online coach with David, he's we started working with this team about a month and a half ago, he's at $184,000 in sales. He has a crazy offer that's generating almost 20 leads a day. He needs more closes right now. 
Mm. But those are legitimate offers that anyone, if you have a nine to five job now, you find a good offer like how we did with many of our closers, you can make money within the next week. It could be that simple, but you need someone to make that connection to because these people who have good offers, they don't upward. <laughs> they not posting job posts like that. You need to know someone already in that circle to make that bridge so that you could find a good offer to be able to close on and make money fast, though. And that's a that's a great sales point for why you, mm-hmm. why choosing sales to bridge that gap, right? Like, mm-hmm. what other way to learn sales and to make money when you don't have a product, service, or anything like that figured out already than to work with somebody who already has that mm-hmm. stuff figured out? Working with a, a name that already has a personal brand. Like, if you go on these people and you see, like, on their social media follow, like Neo, you know, David, I'm sure, right? All these people mm-hmm. that, you know, we're talking about, you can see that they, one, have a personal brand and they have an, a, a, a valuable offer that yes. has immense and clear value. Crazy. So it's like it's kind of like a cheat code. Like, man, it just makes sense to oh. just partner up with yeah. them for the time being, make some money, help them make some money. Yeah. Learn the skill and then take the skill and, and apply it to. Yeah. Go, go start a business, man. That's, that's what I did. Still working with them. Go off, did my own thing and then crushed it. But you asked a good question, too, before about, like, who is a good fit? Because that's a good point. Mm-hmm. So could, could someone married or if you're single, does it make sense? Or even like a um, a single parent or, you know, just parents in general. Like just having someone that is someone else that is relying on you where we always talk about this word security. Right. Yeah. Where it, it's like I think that's for the most part is why sales is so scary for the average person yes, because sir. it doesn't look like something that can be secure. Yes. And oftentimes, even there are moments where it's not secure. You have off seasons. Mm-hmm. You have seasons where you can make 50K a month and then you got a couple months in that year where you barely making five. Yeah. <laughs> so it, it is a little fluctuating. But how can you like if it's not secure, are there specific people that this is for and it might not be a model that is for you? Yes. I would say yes. If you're, you know, single, like how I was getting started, for sure, you should be focusing all in on commission only sales. You should be doing taking the most risks as humanly possible. If you're single, no kids, no girl, no nothing. This is the time to do it. One thousand percent. The worst can worst comes to worst. You go back to a job. Right. You'll be totally fine. It's like you just got yourself to worry about. Yeah. Gotcha. It's, it's chill. So that's that's what I did. So I can speak from that from experience. And then if you have a family, and this is just a personal experience, a personal opinion of mine, what do your what do you want to set? What example do you want to set for your kids? Mm. Do you want to give the example to your kids that you you played it safe? I know so many people who tell their kids, you can go out and do this, you could do that, be the best you could be, but they're working at a nine to five job. That they probably complain about. That they're complaining about. So it's like the messaging doesn't make sense that you tell your children something that you're not doing. Mm. And I tell that to a lot of my clients, too, that if you want your kids to grow up and be the president, whoever they want to be, they're looking at you. Mm. They're looking to see what you do first. So if you're always living in a place of scarcity, a place of security, oh, my God, what's going to happen if this happens? That's going to happen to them. So, yes, is it a risk? For sure. But with commission-only sales, you're betting on yourself. The only person stopping you from making money is you. The biggest obstacle is you at the end of the day. And if you have that self-belief that, like how we say, right, it has to work or it has to work, you'll be just fine. Mm. But I think about that a lot in terms of setting examples and who's watching you and being congruent with your message. Mm. It has to work and it has to work. That's like um, echoing on these last couple of episodes, right? Yeah. You know, it's just having that immense belief in yourself. Got to. And I mean, for the record, like we mentioned, like it's not even like you have to make that jump mm-hmm. and go from here to there only, right? Keep like it slow. Maybe, you know, like do how you did and just ease into it. Yeah. And you eased into it by still working the front desk and then you saw yourself, oh, two, three, 5K a month. Now it's time for me to transition into this full time so that I can see those, you know, those, those 10, those 10, the, the 20K a month. 50. Right? Get crazy. 50. Fit, right? Get crazy. Get crazy. So uh, it's ways for people to ease into it. Uh, as far as 
the three steps to making 15K in yes. 21 days. Let's let's talk to us about that because that's that's your yes. ebook that just came out recently. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. If you could, um, mm-hmm. generally speaking, like what are like three steps or three focus points that we should be like that we should be honing in on to making fifteen k or more in twenty one in the next twenty one days? Oh, man, Q, this, 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 this is a gym right here. This is a gym. This is a gym that I feel only five. I got my pickaxe ready, bro. Come on, man. Only five percent of people actually use this gym, and it breaks my heart. Mm. Is what it is though. So this is going to be for the coaches. Can I can I give that to them? Yeah, because I think coaches. we have a lot of people who yeah. are online coaches here. And we got a lot of future coaches too. Future coaches too. This is a play that anyone can run to make money today. Literally, if you have an expertise in whatever it may be, business, whatever, you go in your story right now and put, "I want to help the next five people make X Y Z in thirty days." DM me ready to be selected. And it can be anything, whatever the expertise may be. Maybe you're a chef I want to help the ne- or a camera guy. I want to help the next 30 people get content in XYZ days. DM me ready. People who are DM you are potential leads or potential clients for you to work with. And the only reason I know this play works is because I've helped probably 12 people at this point make 5K from this in 24 hours. Mm without even having a coaching program, having nothing set up. Have you D, have them DM you. Don't need a lot of followers. Just need to put just run the play. You get people to DM you, and then after they DM you, you send them a simple message saying, hey, thanks for reaching out. Click the link below to schedule a time so we can discuss more on how to help you reach your goals. You create a free Calendly link that asks some basic qualifying questions then you hop on a simple call with them, right? And Q, could that call happen within 24 hours? That call can't happen. That got the same day. Yeah, <laughs> it can happen the same day. You hop on that call, and then this is why I'm so proud of in the book, is this is the script that I've used to close, at this point, over $8 million in sales and help my team members close 5 mil in sales in the last 12 months, so probably 14 mil total. I give them the exact script that I've used step-by-step, step, exact questions. It's literally like driving, driving. You have a destination, you have a GPS, clear route to get there. I tell them what to say, how to say it. And then at the end of the call, it is only 5K for my eight weeks of coaching, only 5K. And at that point, you've made an offer. Then we'll go through how to handle objections and so on and so on. But for the right person, you have three or four calls, one of them closes, one out of four, 25% conversion, bam. You just made 5K that day. Just made 5K. And that's happened so much, man. That's why I was like, it's so simple, but people don't do simple stuff, unfortunately. <laughs> people don't do simple stuff because it, 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 it all has a play on the limited release part. Yeah. So what, what was that? What was that? Um, What's that lead magnet again? Give us that. Give us that word verbiage again. You. Oh, yeah. yeah I yeah, can yeah. help. I'm helping the next 30 people. It's actually in the book, kid. It's in the book. It's in the time. <laughs> it is in the book. Grab the book. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's, I want to help. The next five people make, let's say, $5,000 in 30 days by remote closing. It could be whatever. It doesn't have to be financial. It could be whatever the end goal is for the client, content, whatever. DM me ready to be selected. Serious applicants only. And then you can do that on your story. Phone, black background, put your hand in front of the camera. Super simple. Put on your story, your feed today, mm. right now. Is Smart. that one usually convert the black background? Yeah, bro, it's simple, man. People don't really want to. People, I mean, I'm just thinking that I'll people will want to see. Run it right now, cute. Run it right run now. Run it black, right now, live. Just look at it, black, black background, and then the other one will be talking. See who's one for four better. I promise you, man. Hey. It's, it's simple. If the call to action makes sense, like for Got podcasts, it. I would assume, hey, do you want to create a podcast that can make you money passively in 30 days, something like that? Gotcha, right? gotcha. That makes sense. Well, Mike, bro, I, I'm 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 getting I'm getting heated right now just with this this gems and the, and the game that you're yeah. giving our, our listeners. I know that it is one, it's actionable and it's impactful because they could really, like you said, take some of these gems and move on it today. Today, you just gave a play. You gave a play hey, right there. See that word one time. Today, 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 today. Shit, pause it if you need to. Today. Right, pause it. Write it down. Make that post. Create the Calendly link now. Today. today, say today three times in that sales call. I guarantee you close that sale. Mm. You What's ready to get started today? To change? Today, you ready to get started today? What's yeah. going to happen if you don't make a change? Mm. 
when you when you do nothing, you get nothing. Mm. Mr. Prospect, you said earlier you want to go to go to Dubai. When is the best time to make that happen? Today. Now, you want to think about it? Totally fine. Take a month, take a year, take 10 years. That's 10 years you're not in Dubai. Exactly. <laughs> when do you feel the best That's time to crazy. make it happen? All right. <laughs> That's crazy, man. Shoot, we gonna we gonna switch gears and, and switch up the flow just a little bit, Mike, because I think I think they getting a little too hot over there. Okay, they, okay, they getting a little too okay, hot. We over gotta here. cool them down now. Yeah, we gonna switch gears, and um, I, I like this part of the show because it's called our rapid fire round. So, just to switch it up, I got five random questions that don't have nothing to do with sales or anything we just talked about okay. for the last hour. Or so <laughs> like, it's like a real switch up, like uh, boom. I'm here. Like, we was here, now we are here, right? So this is uh, sponsored by Pod Decks, our guys over there, and these five random questions, like I said, Mike. Just be brief, be brilliant, but most importantly, have fun. All right. Cool. 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 Leo. First one we got is what do you value most in your friends? Honesty. Honesty. Yeah. I like that. Keep it 100. Keep it 100. Keep it a thou wow. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Number two. What is your greatest regret? Man. My greatest regret. Uh, my dad passed when I was 14 years old, and I wish I was way more grateful and appreciative while he was still on, still here on Earth. Mm. No, nah, facts. I, I feel that one. I feel that. Bratty 14-year-old kid syndrome. Mm. <laughs> what is the trait you most respect about yourself? It's number three. The trait? The trait I most... Is that... I... I that's a good question. What's the trap most respect about myself? I'm always down to just get after it. 100%. Grit, grind, uh, hustle. Not even like in like the, in the entrepreneurship sense, but I'm always down to like get after it. Like, let's do something. Like, let's make a move. Let's, let's make it happen. Just do, I don't know, let's just do something. Yeah, let's right? make it happen. If you yeah. want to go to the gym, let's go to the gym. Let's you want to right here, now. let's go. Today. Got gotcha. you. Get it done. Hey, that's respect, man. People, we, we need more people like you. I'm for it, man. I'm especially for it. especially when y'all out, y'all listening to this and you ready to go. Like, damn, what I'm going to do next? Just call Mike up. I got you. He, he going to be ready to go with you. Put the bat in your back. <laughs> hey, who is your favorite hero of fiction? Fiction means like a real person? Yeah. Okay, make sure. All right, all right. Yeah, yeah, nonfiction, not real. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> real person. Uh, my favorite person that's... That's considered a hero. Hmm... Huh. Shit, you can consider them a hero. Yeah, facts, right? I'm, a, I'm, I'm my biggest fan. That's for sure. <laughs> now, I would say like a, a real hero who I just like admire doing like crazy stuff in the world. To be real, I like what Michael B. Jordan is doing. Mm. In the sense of, I look at him a lot, like health, fitness wise. He's crushing out there and the acting community and stuff like that. I don't know. I'm, a, I'm a huge fan. My biggest hero. I, I might be a stretch, but. I always look at him like, all right, then. I like the lifestyle, what he's doing, everything, total package there. I always look at that as like, that's cool. That's solid. That's solid. All right, man. Well, last one we got right here is if you had someone following you around all the time, what would you have them do? Content. Just record. Yeah, I know. Record it. <laughs> I knew that was it, right? Videographer. Record everything I say and do 24-7. Videography, record. pictures, get the candidates going. Yeah, yeah, man. Get all yeah, the we content. We need all that. Dude, bro, we need, need it, all. man. Coolio, well, we switching gears, bro. I got a couple more questions for you before we wrap things up. For and sure. um, you ever watch The Matrix? Of course. Okay, of course. Per perfect, perfect. So I'm going to have you sit in the seat and play Morpheus. And our audience is going to be mm -hmm. Neo. So I want you to give our audience an option between the red pill and the blue pill, what, what that would look like. I want you to make it hard for them to, like, if they could pick between the red pill and the blue pill, what options do they have? That's a good question. So yeah. The red pill, the blue pill. Okay. Yeah, yeah, for sure, man. All right. So you, you guys have uh, two options. You have the red pill right here. The red pill is what most people take. You take the red pill and you are guaranteed a good life. You get to make $60,000 a year, spend time with your family, travel maybe twice, twice a year. Everything that you were taught as a kid, it actually happens. Everything. Your parents said, go to school, good job. All the stuff that they imagine happening, it does. And it's safe. It's secure. No risk at all. Then you got the blue pill over here. It's a little, it's, it's a little scary. It's not a guarantee. But on the blue pill lies a whole world 
of people making money you can't even imagine. Mm. Where I'm talking, people are investing seven figures, buying stuff you can't even fathom. But more importantly, you have true freedom in the sense of you could do what you want, when you want, wherever you want, without anyone ever stopping you. The only catch is that it's not guaranteed. (laughs) <laughs> it's not guaranteed. <laughs> I'm about to say, what's the caveat here? Okay. Yeah, says, this is not guaranteed. Uh, the blue pill only works by self-activation. You have to find something within yourself to activate the blue pill. It's not enough just to take it. Something has to happen. I can't tell you what that thing is. Shit, it might be a honey pack. You might need a honey pack to mix with it. Yeah, <laughs> you might need it. <laughs> yeah. oh, so just fuck that off then. But yeah. yeah, you got two options then. Hey, blue pills, entrepreneurship, the red pill is. That's a good one. That's a good one, Mike. We gonna we gonna drop that in. Um, so y'all gonna be able to vote for that red pill or blue pill <laughs> in the Spotify. We also gonna drop it in the Facebook group. We're trying to make sure you got access to that Thank too, you. Mike. I appreciate that, bro. We gonna drop it in the Facebook group. So y'all go ahead, figure out which one you are. You gonna pick that red pill, the guaranteed safe life, or that blue pill, the unguaranteed life of freedom. But that's for, that freedom is anything you imagine for yourself. You pretty much. Can can have it. It's just not guaranteed, though. It's not guaranteed. It's not guaranteed. <laughs> All right, man. All right, man. So let's say you are uh, getting ready to walk out of here, Mike, and you walk past a spin image of 18-year-old you. What would be some advice you would leave 18-year-old Mike? Start today. Start today. Start now. Mike, man, man, don't man, waste man. any more time, bro. <laughs> okay. Let's get this going ASAP now. All the self-doubts you have in your mind, all the beliefs about what about them, what do they think, what about your friends, eliminate that immediately. Success loves speed. What's life going to look like if you don't do this? And to kind of keep it very simple, Q, and just give someone, like if I had like two seconds to talk to myself, I'll mm-hmm. ask two questions then easily. Mm-hmm. One, where, it, where where is that you want to go? What are your goals? Boom. Two, I would ask, what's stopping you from achieving those goals? Boom. And if I had a third one, I would tell myself, Mike, the only real challenge you're having right now is you. Mm. The enemy is the inner me. Mm. You are your biggest obstacle to getting to where you want to be right now. And I'll walk away in my Lambo, and he'd be like, damn. That's bars. That guy, <laughs> we're telling the truth. Facts, <laughs> man, facts. Yo, that's straight bars, though, Mike. I mean, not just for 18-year-old Mike, but... To, you know, all the millionaires that are, that are listening to this content right now and, and that are going to be listening soon, you know, that that's some real advice is to eliminate not the enemy because we train to to we train to see all these ops. Everybody yeah. claiming they got ops, <laughs> but it's only one op. <laughs> And that's the op inside you, right? Ooh, Ooh that's crazy. That's the bar right there. That's crazy, man. Yeah, so go ahead, crazy. Mike. Plug yourself in. Tell our guests a little bit more where they can find you. You got that ebook. Tell them where they can find that ebook. Now's the time to you know plug yourself in. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. No Keith. doubt. Yeah, man. So for anyone who wants to make more money and spend more time doing the things that they love, you want to make an extra two, three, five k, or even ten k a month, like Amika did, like Corey did, like Derek did. I can help you bridge that gap to learn a high income skill in eight weeks so you can do more of the things that you like. You can follow me on Instagram at mbusby underscore. Send me a DM with the DM saying podcast and I'll know you came from Q. I'll hook you up for sure. And if you want to just tap into the ebook, it's called fifth, sorry, three steps to making 15K within 21 days. So if you're an online coach or you want to become a remote closer, There are steps in there for each of you to learn basic skill sets to close your client for 5K. If you're a coach or if you're a remote closer or want to become a remote closer, um, three easy steps you can do to start making money today. There it is. Today. 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 T-O-D-A-Y. I love that word, man. Today. Today. Take immediate action. And like he said, you'll go ahead and DM Mike today. That word podcast so he can get you that book and know that you came straight from the Million Dollar Mind community. And he's going to look out for you, man. So 
you know, with that being said, Mike, I appreciate you taking Thank time you. out of your Saturday to join us and have this, you know, high level conversation with our millionaires and for our folks that are listening, wherever they're listening. And to our millionaires, I'm super appreciative of you guys tapping in with us week in, week out, every Monday, every Friday. Y'all watching new episodes and throughout the week, y'all giving us, you know, engagements, telling us where y'all want to listen to next, who y'all want to hear from. And that's super appreciative because that is every bit of what makes this show. So keep that up. I love y'all. Mike, I appreciate you again. And with that being said, man, just remember to keep focused, build momentum, and drive results so you can live abundantly. My name is Kai Speaks. You just heard from Mike Busby on getting to the promised land, right? We get into the promised land with high ticket sales, making that 15K in 21 days or less. But we are out. That's it.